Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Hodor released a new blog today, and there are several points within this piece that I want to highlight with you, and you should read the whole thing if you have time. It's another fantastic piece, but some of the stuff that I want to run through with you includes uh, Puma, a new browser that's incorporating Coil into it. The, the Coil software, it's actually built into the browser itself. Uh, we've got Coil. Additionally, this is a separate story, but it's still on Coil. Uh, they have a new payout program. It's called their Boost Payout Program. I'll be getting into details on that. Uh, also, I've, I've spoken a little bit recently about a new foundation created. Uh, it's an XRP foundation created by Wheatsay Wind. And I've got some additional information on that that I'd like to share with you. And that's that's the bulk of the XRP stuff for this video. Beyond that, though, I've got a couple other exciting stories I want to share with you in the non-XRP realm, if you care to stick around after I finish talking about my favorite digital asset, XRP. Uh, this one I find interesting. Uh, somebody is trying to tokenize the moon. Yes, yes, that, uh, that, uh... <laughs> That satellite going around our planet, the moon, yes, uh, somebody's actually trying to tokenize that, and to what end. Uh, and also, I've got a story about uh, a, a Silk Road drug dealer getting arrested, so I thought I'd share that with you just because it's fascinating content from my perspective, so I hope you like that as well. But before we get going here, if you would, please delicately tap that like button, and if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, you know what to do. Subscribe, treat yourself, do yourself a favor, it's the right thing to do. All right. So here's a tweet from Hodor. If you follow XRP, you'll want to read about the latest major developments, including the formation of a new nonprofit foundation. And so let me go ahead and start from the top here. I love the intro, actually. I don't always read his intros. I, sometimes I just jump into the individual segments about different topics. But uh, this, is, uh, this is something that I'd prefer to uh, run through right here because it's... Uh, It'll set the it'll set the tone. It's a it's it's positive thinking anyway. So check this out. He starts the piece out by stating XRP update: real business versus speculation. We've all felt it when the crypto market moves suddenly in the wrong direction. There's degrees of emotion involved, and in a market where most of the choices reflect prices based only on speculation, that's understandable. Me. I've been trading in digital assets since, assets since uh, 2013. Before I discovered XRP, I traded in various cryptos, including Bitcoin. And I've seen the emotions that go along with the heights of confidence and the depths of despair. And I've been surprised, very surprised, with how each time fate deals the crypto market a setback, it, climbs to, uh, it seems to climb back higher than its previous records. Look at what's happening now. When cautious optimism is battling with fear, 2018 was not so long ago, and the market is still jittery. But for those of us that own XRP, times are changing. We do not depend on the kindness of luck. We've chosen the one digital asset with the best performance metrics. We've chosen the one digital asset with the most powerful championing organization. We've chosen the one digital asset with the fastest growing online community. We've chosen the one digital asset used by banks and remittance processors. And ultimately, we've chosen the one digital asset that will be used for real business. It's this profound difference that will carry the day. The bear market of 2018 was too early for utility-based demand to emerge. But make no mistake that XRP will distinguish itself from the pack, and it will be measured and discussed by thought leaders in a way that Bitcoin never was. The entire market is changing, refocusing on what it will take to reach the next level of digital asset adoption. And the path is becoming more clear with each passing day. And I could not agree more with Hoda right there. It's exactly what I, what I always talk about when I state that the reason I am happy to invest my own real money in XRP, it's because I understand that utility will win the day. That's my, that's my whole investment thesis. That's it. Utility matters. I know, rocket science, right? <laughs> Not exactly, but I don't, I don't understand why some people don't seem to see that that's more important than uh, any sort of other speculative nonsense going around other coins. It's real-world adoption, because humans will not perpetually give any cryptocurrency a real market value unless it actually has a use. Confidence will wane, and they'll realize that this is silly. It's a bubble that didn't need to be inflated in the first place in that case, if there's no real use for it. So uh, that's why I'm happy to put my money in XRP and XRP only. If there are other coins in the future that actually get used in the commercial production of anything, let me know and I will be interested. But as it stands today, 
as far as an actual cryptocurrency being used for anything, XRP is the only one in commercial production. That's it. And it's neat that there's other stuff being built out on top of that. And just when you put everything together, it just becomes mind-blowing. It's like, this is the only one right now. And this is not financial advice. Please don't buy or sell. Don't get excited because of what I'm saying. That would be dumb. <laughs> but it is it is very cool to me, nonetheless. And, um, and then especially, we're about to talk about coil here. I got a couple coil things for you. And this is so fascinating because Coil is actually using um, a blend of technologies. It's not just XRP, but it's Interledger Protocol as well. And thanks to the combination of these things, you can actually stream money in real time. How freaking cool is that? And a native digital asset is required to make some of these payouts occur. So, And it is XRP in this case, of course. And so why would humans not assign a value to a digital asset that provides real-world utility like that? And that's why, like I was saying in my last video, in terms of a valuation model, I'm going to try and maybe start to remember uh, using that language when I'm talking about this, because that, that's Anthony Pompliano's language, but it fleshed out my own original concept lately that I st stated in the last video, which is if businesses can use digital assets, speculators will see that they will buy the digital assets knowing that businesses need them. And it will have a true market value as a, re as a result that is staying power. And you would think it would increase over time as more and more speculators jump in along with institutional investors that want to diversify. And many institutional investors, of course, are looking for those asymmetric returns that we're you accustomed to seeing in crypto over the last decade in particular. So uh, this thing's not going away anytime soon. In fact, I'd argue never unless we um, nuke each other to death and get thrown back into the Stone Age. But outside of that, I think that it's uh, safe to assume that crypto is going to be here for ever because there's actual utility to this stuff and then you just got to see where developers are building so let me scroll down a little bit into this piece i want to talk oh I, I don't think i teased this in the beginning here but uh swell uh the swell conference from last year i wanted to read through this real quick and i'll, I'll, I'll tell you why afterwards so this is real short swell 2019 taking shape swell 2019 is more well-defined and the official website has been updated with a new look and feel along with fresh information about the agenda during the two-day annual conference. It was February of this year when Amy Hearth, Ripple's head of global events, confirmed that Singapore would be the next destination city for Swell and the, the, the site has been updated with that theme. The conference will take place over Thursday and Friday on November 7th and 8th. Like prior years, the event will feature a concept of flash talks along with traditional presentations. In prior years, Ripple has dramatically announced the keynote plans for its Swell conference, and I expect this year will be consistent. Thus far, we don't know who the specific speakers will be. If you want to attend personally this year, the site also has a link to request an invitation, and there's a link there, so if you want to click on it, feel free. I will include a link to Hodor's blog below, of course. The reason this is fascinating, the reason that I'm looking forward to this and I wanted to cite this, first of all, on the, the, the topic of who will speak there, um, you know, not, not stating uh, anything politically here whatsoever, but Bill Clinton was a speaker at this last year. And that's just, that's just interesting to me. I don't know why that choice came to be, and I'm not saying pro, pro or negative about Bill Clinton because I have no interest in being, uh, <laughs> or, uh, being divisive about politics or religion or anything like that. Uh, if, I, if I'm going to be divisive of anything, it better just be cryptocurrency. That's it, because I'm staking my position. Uh, I'm making it very clear that I am pro XRP. <laughs> All right, That's about as divisive as I want to get within the, the cryptocurrency well. And then beyond that, I don't really want to be divisive, but I just th found it fascinating. So it makes me wonder, who are they going to have this year? How, how do you how do you top a um, you know a, a former president of the United States and so we'll we'll see who's speaking there and again whether or not you think pro or negative things about Clinton doesn't matter to me I don't care I don't want to talk about politics fascinating nonetheless even more important though there was a major announcement last year and people were surprised because I remember people speculating on on uh, on Twitter in the especially the month leading up to uh, leading up to swell it was in September. And some people were saying, oh, man, there could be a major announcement. I, I bet a crap gets announced. And, but most people are like, oh, no, no, no nothing's going to get announced. You think they're going to announce X Rapid at something like this? That's not the purpose of an event like this. I remember reading stuff like that. And I just kind of sat there and I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. There's no way to know. For me, it's just like I don't have a position on this because it would have been speculation without any actual evidence to make me believe it would be reasonable to believe one way or the other. So I didn't have a stance. But sure enough, uh, October rolls around, beginning of October, Swell comes around, 
And I'll be damned, X Rapid was announced at the freaking conference. It, it was announced that the production version was live, and uh, I, I believe the first, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, the first X Rapid commercial transaction ever to be conducted uh, went down like immediately after that. It was that very same day, and so I'm wondering. Is there going to be anything equally mind blowing thrown out by Ripple this year? Because again, that caught a lot of people off guard. They didn't think that something like X Rapid going into the into production would have been announced specifically then. And it was also fascinating to me that in the time leading up to the the, the announcement of X Rapid being launched, the the production version, there there actually was a rumor that leaked out that it was going to be happening soon. And you saw, and this is one of the few times news actually did something in the positive for XRP price. Funny enough, but XRP, I, I don't remember what it was at prior to this. I don't know if it was around forty cents or something like this. Uh, we're talking, you know, late August or early early September maybe of, of two thousand eighteen. But it ran up to. I, I'm pretty sure it was over seventy cents. It may have reached close to. 80 cents um, if my memory's not failing me here and then it, it promptly went back down you know it didn't take too long for it to go back down but um the news was actually uh, it wasn't the news that got the price up to that it was baked into the price prior because there was a leak there and so when, when we talk about uh, news coming out and uh p- people just uh Art thrilled, obviously, that it seems like all this good news comes out as it pertains to Ripple and XRP and other developers, just the whole ecosystem, and it's like, oh my god, nothing makes the price go up. But I want to make a point to you here. I, I think that all of this news, this positive news, is having a positive impact, even if you're not seeing the price going up. It helps for investors like you and I to understand that there is real utility and there there are real developments occurring behind the scenes. And as a result, it instills confidence for those of us that are still here. And I think without those types of, of uh, those, those types of developments, if I, for instance, let's just say a, a completely bizarre world where there were no developments. So we're seeing all sorts of development and price doesn't do anything seemingly. Well, let's, let's assume there was a fake world where they, there were no developments whatsoever. I'm thinking about I, myself, Matt, Mr. XRP Bull. Moon Lambo. Would I still be in uh, investing in XRP? Would I be a little bit more skittish about it? Where would my optimism level stand at that point? And if there weren't news coming out, I would be much more intimidated. I don't think I would have bought as much XRP as I had, but I see it's not because of Ripple. I didn't do it specifically because of Ripple. I see them, yes, find their factor, but I see all the other developers building on top. I see all of the adoption taking place very early stages, and so that instills confidence in me. So the point I wanted to make is while people think that when this news comes out, it's not actually doing any good for the, the ecosystem, that's, that's actually not true. It actually is doing a lot of good for the ecosystem because us that are here, it makes us want to stay here. Because we see that. And without that, the price of XRP, I argue, would, would be lower. But as more entities join uh, the, the world of crypto and uh, want to, as, as speculators come in, including institutional investors, and they want to diversify, you're going to see just the floodgates open at some point, And you will see utility win the day, but you will see all sorts of new money coming in. And we will have an asset class one day that is valued in the trillions. That's what I believe. And none of this is financial advice, but that is what I believe on the topic. Uh, next piece here, uh, Buyan Bank. All right, so check this out. Buyan Bank in Kuwait is a uh, Kuwaiti Islamic bank with 44 branches throughout the oil-rich country. Ripple has been making enormous progress in the Middle East, and Buyan Bank is the latest to join RippleNet. On July 18th, the bank announced that they joined the network. Several news sites covered the announcement, which quoted officials from the bank, including the deputy CEO of the bank. And here's another opportunity for me to butcher uh, a foreign name, so I'm going to take that opportunity. It's Abdullah al Tuwaidri. Let's just call him John. So anyway, deputy CEO of the bank, John, who uh, indicated that Buyan Bank will soon begin to offer fund settlement to any location worldwide by using RippleNet. The announcement was fantastic news and adds one more bank to the growing list of banks that have added RippleNet to their technology stack. Thanks to XRP Center for his update on Bouillon Bank. And thank you, John. I can pronounce John. That's why we're using that. (laughs) All right, here's one of the two pieces about Coil I want to share with you. A little over a month ago, Coil advertised a new program for content creators that have decided to help pioneer its platform. The promotion is called the Coil Boosting Pilot, and it will continue throughout its boosting period. And here's the, the tweet from Coil. And this is June 17th, 2019. In honor of the exceptional creators who were among the first to use the Coil platform, we're piloting a boosting payout program. And then the piece continues here. Coil explained a bit more about the, uh, on their blog about the program. 
Qualifying creators will periodically receive boosting payments on top of their regular earnings from Coil. Initially, we will send boosting payments on a monthly basis, but the frequency may evolve over the course of the pilot. All right. Fascinating indeed. It's nice that they're kind of like uh, really propping up the, the people that are with them kind of from the get-go. I do like that. That's respectable. Uh, while the original participants, such as myself, had already benefited from the first round of payments, Coil's second payment was sent out to me, the original participants, and the new program members on July 17th to the delight of many content creators. If you're curious to learn more or would like to sign up for the program yourself, read more about Coil's official blog. And so... Uh, I, I like that. That's very friendly. But you know what's more exciting in this video that I'm sharing with you about Coil is the Puma browser. Please check this out. And then I'm going to share with you a couple of thoughts on, of mine on this. So Puma browser, check this out. The Puma browser is a privacy-focused web browser being built by a team of developers led by Yuri Dubinsky and Sergey Dubinsky, four names. Okay, so uh, let's rename them. Uh, sorry, no offense here. Um, the developers led by John and John... Uh, Coil has decided to work with the team at Puma to integrate Coil and enhance its functionality as it used on iOS devices, while browser plugins work too. Uh, close collaboration with a browser development team is much more beneficent, uh, beneficial to a platform such as Coil. On July 16th, the Puma official Twitter account sent out an update, and here's the update on it. Uh, this looks like it's a three-part thing here. We've been hard at work rebuilding Puma Browser with Firefox iOS as base. Polina, who joined as founding iOS engineer, has made amazing progress, and we're happy to announce that we are now the App Store with much better Coil support. Thanks a ton to our beta testers for all the feedback and support. We still have lots to, to build, but this is a, a significant step toward, so you can now use Puma Browser as your main browser. Turns out tabs are useful. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, we'll be sharing more in the coming weeks, but if you're around uh, D-Web Camp this week, come say hi and grab some limited edition stickers. The stickers have arrived. Uh, first one to recognize all the ones in the photo gets one for sure. And uh, a, a title of Cool Cat. <laughs> That's good. Okay, I like that. But uh, here's what I like seeing, and I hope that as we see the, the, the whole coil ecosystem flesh out and, and build out as time passes, my hope is that you'd see this type of technology built in from the get-go on every major browser. Wouldn't that be the dream come true? Especially if you're an XRP holder, because if that is the case, if Coil's technology really does get traction, and, and technically it's it's so early on, this and pretty much everything else is kind of an unknown. We can have confidence in something and say, hey, this sounds like a brilliant idea, and it does certainly seem that way to me, but it's an unknown. So what, what would be the ultimate dream here? So if you could have coil technology actually be built out to the point where it's in every browser and then you can imagine what that in turn would mean for the XOP, XRP ecosystem because coil does utilize a blend of interledger protocol and XRP and so that has to be held somewhere it has to be used somewhere in this case it's coil and it just takes more out of the ecosystem and you know what that means for supply and demand and and I also and I made the point recently too I, it's just in terms of the valuation of XRP it's not about how much XRP is needed for the utility. That's not what's going to determine price. That's not how humans behave when they're buying and selling for a speculative venture. It's more like, hey, we see XRP being used. This gives us confidence in it. I want to diversify my assets. I'm investing in XRP. That's conceptually what goes down here. It's not about how fast XRP is and how much you need to con use, utilize XRP as a bridge currency you know, to convert from one fiat to another. That's not what it is. And it's not how much is needed to make sure that you can stream money in real time utilizing coil. That's not it either. That's not how humans behave. So, but the point is, the more stuff you see like this, it does affect supply and demand. Nonetheless, it does. Just what's available because most XRP is not available for sale on on exchanges. Most of it's being held in, in, uh, in cold wallets. And so the, the supply and demand matters, certainly, but on top of that, it's just the idea of if the more adoption that you see on, on top of any specific blockchain with a digital asset, that digital asset will be purchased on a much greater scale as time passes. That's, that's my investment thesis. That, that's it. It's not financial advice, but that's what I believe is happening. Utility matters. I think it will win the day here. All right. Um, then the last thing I want to cover, because I can't, I just, there's too much in here. I can't cover everything in this blog, even though it's an excellent piece and you should read it if you have time. Uh, I want to flesh out a little bit more of the concept behind the XRP Foundation. 
And this piece, this part of the, the piece is, is titled XRP News. One of the strongest points about XRP is the strength of its championing organizations. I've written about this in the past, expounding on the enormous benefits from Ripple's ability to promote both XRP and its various use cases through the expanding Internet of Value. In addition, spring companies, those that have received an investment from uh, investment of value from Ripple through its initiative, have provided an enormous boost to utility as well, even though only a year has passed since the, the, the program start date. So you may wonder about the latest news, uh, the, the forming of a new nonprofit organization to help organize efforts around the XRP community. And here's the tweet from We Say When, and this, this part of the tweet I did uh, cover in a previous video, which you may or may not have seen, uh, but there's additional news on this. But the tweet states, I have really exciting news. Uh, at Mr. HVD, Tom Custer and I worked on something really cool regarding XRP Community Fund. And uh, he writes, drum roll. The XRP Community Fund will soon be a, a, an official foundation registered in the, the Netherlands. The XRP Community Fund was started by a donation from Witse Wind and several other XRP community members when they received bug bounties from exchanges and other XRP ecosystem stakeholders. It's already been used to finance the creation of a payment plugin, uh, to, to formalize the process, and to establish a more permanent organization to oversee what could be material amounts of community investment in the future. A small group based in the Netherlands, has decided to found a non-profit to help administer the fund and to provide a central community organization that can coordinate and channel community-based development on the XRP ledger. So to me, this is completely badass stuff. And then, um, and you can see here, here's a list of some of the people uh, that are involved. <coughs> a couple notable names, which I have discussed on this channel, beyond Wheat Say Wind, of course. Uh, there's there's Hammer, Hammer, Hammer Toe, who is Matt Hamilton. I've discussed He's a wealth of knowledge, especially from a technical perspective. I've covered him. And then you've got, uh, this one stood out to me, Bob Way. That is a former Ripple employee, and he has been rather active within the XRP community over the last, I don't know, three or four months, something like that. And he's been on a, at least two different YouTubers' channels. I saw him with um, uh, Brad Kimes on Investment Perspectives, and I saw him on Alex Cobb's channel as well. And the amount of information that he put out there was astounding. I took in so much information from him that I just couldn't retain it all. And I need to go back and rewatch both of the sit-down interviews that I had. Those were absolutely fantastic. So uh, feel free to look those up if you're curious. But Bob Way, former Ripple employee, absolute wealth of knowledge, uh, knows a ton um, on, on the tech side. But also, as far as the, the, the Ripple business model, as it were, when he worked there... He shared a lot about that and what the overall goal was and how they perceived the, the ecosystem, how they thought it would likely evolve and why it would actually have long-term value, what the goal was behind that anyway. And so that, that was genuinely fascinating, and I, I like seeing that. But, um, that's it for the XRP stuff here. Let me jump now into this story, which I find fascinating. And um, full disclosure, I actually haven't read this yet. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a time crunch, but it sounded fascinating enough, and it's short enough that I thought I'd just kind of read through it with you, and we can learn about this together, all right? <laughs> So this is from Coindesk, and it's it's titled "Diana, a blockchain lunar registry, attempts to tokenize the moon." That sounds like insanity, but maybe it's very cool. Let's read through this. All right. In honor of Neil Armstrong's small step, one company is taking a giant leap for blockchain. Oh, how clever! On the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, Diana, a blockchain startup, is launching a lunar registry that attempts to place the lunar surface on a distributed ledger. The project is offering collective ownership of Earth's only natural satellite through dividing the moon into 3.8 billion-ish uh, cells encoded on a blockchain by a three-word address. Proof of stake in this uh, cadastral map is represented by two tokens, Dia and Mond. Not familiar. I guess those are built into it, then I've not heard of that at all. And then here's another section of this titled, We Come in Pieces. That's clever, too. Man, who, somebody, somebody's so witty out there. <laughs> Following the launch of the Diana blockchain, the startup also plans to develop a decentralized autonomous organization and eventually an exchange to build an economy around the orbital celestial object. DIA, a native token distributed upon registration, so oh, there we go, it is a native token, uh, will be exchangeable with MOND intended for transactions. Accordingly, registration costs will increase as more tokens are sold. 
uh, which will boost the value of, of tokens for market participants and prevent speculation. 50% of the tokens will be made publicly available, while less than 2% will be reserved for the founders and development team, and the rest will act as a reserve. Okay. Tokens will be held in noun.verb.noun addresses, diana.love.bts, i.am.yourfather, and amstrong.land. That, that's got to be a typo. They must mean Armstrong. That, they have to. Yeah, Armstrong.land.moon. That's a typo. Because like I said in a recent video, um, 0% of articles in the crypto media, 0% of them are proofread. That's a fun fact. 0% are proofread. There we go. So there we go. Armstrong instead of Armstrong. There we are. All right. And then the last little section is the dark side of the moon. The project's white paper quotes Article 2 of the UN Outer Space Treaty. Outer space, including the moon and other celestial bodies, is not subject to national appropriation by claim of sovereignty, by means of use of occupation, or by any other means. Okay. Yet the founders point out this treaty says nothing about private ownership or parceling out the solar system, noting that many sovereign nations like China and capital-rich corporations like Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin are gearing up to explore and perhaps monopolize humanity's shared heritage. The project leads think this next space, uh, next gen space race will inevitably lead to the question of who owns the moon. Given the increased possibility of ownership disputes, Diana is currently offering tokenized ownership of the visible lunar surface, a chance for everyone to get a slice. Okay, gosh, and then it wraps up with this. As part of the project roadmap, the team hopes to establish a, a Together Moon Foundation, appoint an international and space expert defense team and develop the biz model for moon possession. Okay, I don't know how you decide. <laughs> like, I mean, I sort of know. I, I, I don't, uh, let me, I'll just say it how I was originally going to say it. Anyway. I don't know how you decide who has <laughs> the autonomy to determine who owns the moon. Uh, technically, I kind of know because it's already been done with, for instance, the South Pole, right? Like uh, all the uh, the land down there, it's mostly ice, right? But all the land down there, uh, there actually treaties are in place, and so countries can agree to stuff like that. But what I was sitting here as I'm reading through this, reading this to you, I'm sitting there wondering, okay, so this entity is just doing this. Who's going to be like, oh yeah, they called it first. They get the moon. Like what? <laughs> this is like there. There must be more to it that's just not covered here because otherwise, it's it, that sounds too stupid. Like, frankly, it just sounds stupid without additional information. So there has to be more to this, but. Um, yeah, who's going to abide by this and be like, well, we tokenize, it's on the blockchain. Yeah, we own this. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. You sure, buddy? Okay. Well, if there's more to this, I'm happy to flesh it out. Because, I mean, I am curious. Like, how does this actually work? You know, we, we haven't even, it's funny, like, we haven't even finished, like, properly tokenizing real estate on the planet. And these guys are like, no, 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 no. No, leapfrog that S word. We're going to the moon. Like, let's tokenize the moon. You know, forget forget, forget your uh, your beachside property in L.A. You're like, no, 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 no. We don't need to tokenize that. Just go straight to the moon. We're, we're good. <laughs> Super duper. All right, here's the last thing I wanted to cover. I'll just read part of this. It's from Cointelegraph. And it's titled, Alleged Silk Road Drug Dealer Arrested in the United States. United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, Jeffrey S. Berman, announced the arrest of alleged dark web, web a drug dealer, Hugh Brian Haney, in a press release published on July 18th. Per the release, Haney has been charged with money laundering. He allegedly used cryptocurrency to launder more than $19 million of profit earned selling illegal drugs on the now-defunct dark net market Silk Road. That's a lot of money. A Berman commented to the development. Today's arrest should be a warning to dealers peddling their drugs on the dark web that they cannot remain anonymous forever, especially when attempting to legitimize their illicit proceeds. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Angel M. Melendez, Homeland Security Investigations Special Agent in Charge, pointed out that after Silk Road was closed in 2013... Cyber criminals simply sought other ways to continue their criminal activities and, more importantly, launder their illicit digital currency. Haney was allegedly one of those criminals. Melinda has concluded, HSI special agents employed blockchain analytics to under uncover and seize bitcoins valued at $19 million and usher Haney out of the dark web shadows to face justice in the Southern District of New York. Man, isn't that crazy? You just would have thought if you could have left, left alone, like, okay... 
I did this illicit activity, shouldn't have done it, but if I don't try and uh, cash out all this Bitcoin that was uh, illegally used and is tainted, uh, I can just not go to jail. And uh, that didn't, that's not what happened here. So this guy, this guy's in trouble, man. You shouldn't have done that. And you're stupid, and now you're going to go to jail for probably a very, very, very long time. So that's the gist of this. But I wanted to read this to point out again that uh, Bitcoin is a terrible way to engage in illicit activities. You know, if you want to do that, if you're smart, you're just going to use paper money. You just are. Because that that's much harder to trace. Much, much, much harder to trace. But Bitcoin is not anonymous. It's pseudo anonymous. And you can sh- you see where, because the, I mean, the blockchain's public, you can see where transactions go. So the, the, this is stupid. This is absolutely stupid. <laughs> you know? But uh, that's all I got for you this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau!